in Denver, Colorado, I was preaching out there, and some guys came to the meeting. They said, now, Mr. Hovind, we know you teach the earth is only 6,000 years old. We would like to prove to you that you're wrong. I get this just about every week. You probably will, too, right? These guys worked at the Denver National Ice Core Laboratory. Denver National Ice Core Laboratory. It is a section of the Federal Center in Denver, Colorado. What you're seeing here is a picture of a giant freezer. This freezer is enormous. The guys who brought me into this freezer, it's 36 below zero in there all the time. You know, taxpayers are paying the uh, <coughs> electric bill, so, you know, set it where you're comfortable. Uh, the freezer is enormous. These were the guys that go to Greenland and drill holes through the ice. They also go to the South Pole and drill holes. The Russians are doing this too. They take these, it's called a coring machine. Here's a picture of one here. It, it's like a pipe. It drills down, maybe a four inch pipe. It drills down just the outside. So the center part is not disturbed. It's called a coring machine. I asked him, I said, now how do you, when you're drilling a pipe down to the ground and you pick it up, doesn't, doesn't the piece fall out? They said, oh no, they showed me the thing, how they do it, the drilling machine. It's got little flaps in there down near the bottom. When they stop turning, as soon as they start to lift up, these flaps come in and catch. So they drill about a six foot section at a time. They drill down. As soon as they start to lift it, it snags the bottom and breaks it off. So they pull up a six foot piece of ice about this big, slide it into a tube and mark it. This is number, you know, 813 or whatever it was. Then they can go back to the laboratory and put them in order and reassemble it. So they have a huge long core of it's just as if they laid it out from drilling down. The deepest hole they ever drilled is 10,000 feet through this ice uh, with this coring machine. They actually set up a big building over the top to stay warm while they're doing all this work, and they may live there for two months while they're drilling a hole just so they can have some more ice in Denver. <laughs> just what they need. But this newspaper article said, uh, in Lakewood, Colorado, a Denver suburb, Associated Press, 10 ice core samples yanked from a remote Antarctic glacier are resting in a giant freezer here, waiting to be tested. What do, they, what do they want the ice out of the Greenland and South Pole for? When they drill down, here's the coring machine. You can see the teeth at the end, how it kind of grips it when it starts to pull it up. Uh, I'm gonna, I drew these lines on here because you can't see it at this angle, but there are dark and light lines, which I'll show you in a minute. The guys took me in the freezer and they showed me these lines. And here's a photograph of one. You can see the dark and light lines. They said, now, Mr. Hoven, up in Greenland, it doesn't snow much, and it's really cold in the winter. In the summer, the snow melts just a little, and you get a layer of water on top. Then it refreezes in the winter and makes a clear layer of ice. Now, clear ice on this picture shows up as a dark line. If it never gets a chance to melt, the snow is going to pack or press down and make a white layer of ice. So they said what these layers represent is summer and winter, summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter. Well, that's not true, as we'll see. This rest of this newspaper article said, in Greenland and Antarctica, where the weather is consistently dry and very cold, the glaciers are miles thick, but the annual rings are very thin. Summer, winter. Now here's where the problem is right here. The deepest cores can measure over 10,000 feet. Cores from Greenland drilled since 1990 show the northern climate was erratic 135,000 years ago. All they do, you count back 135,000 rings and assume we can look at the weather patterns. Did they get more snow or less snow in Greenland? Well, what's the obvious assumption in all of this? That the rings are annual. Just because you got a clear line and a white line, packed snow and melted snow, doesn't mean it's annual, does it? We know that it's not. This is uh, the Lost Squadron. I've got the book and the video if you want to watch it in my office. Stop by after class and I'll let you take it home and watch it. Uh, I tell you what, if you want to check out any of my stuff, Heidi, if you can kind of keep track of who does it so we can be sure to get it back. Because I know how people are. They borrow and never return, you know. But I, I'll let you take my video home and you can watch about the Lost Squadron. It's very fascinating. Did, did you go with me, Eric, when we saw the, the plane? I did not. Uh, it's, if you ever get up to Knoxville, just go north another hour and a half into Middleborough, Kentucky. If you get up in that region, it's worth going to see. Get your picture taken beside it. Okay. Uh, they, some airplanes ran, ran out of gas during World War II. So they turned around and were going to land in Greenland. And the first one came in and flipped over. He hit a crack in the ice. 
He was fine. The guy got out, radioed back to the rest of them. He said, leave your landing gear up. Just come in and belly land, you know, because if you put your wheels down, you're going to flip it over. So the rest of them, they run out of gas. They've left their wheels up and slid in on the ice, and everybody's fine. I think one guy broke his arm or something, but I don't remember. It's all on the video. Anyway, these airplanes landed in Greenland. The guys waited there for like four, five, six, or maybe nine days until somebody could rescue them. And it's a long story of how they almost froze to death. Anyway, the Eskimos came in there with dog sleds, got them, and took them out. Everybody's fine. They left the airplanes, of course. For one thing, coming in with your wheels up is not good on your plane. Your props hit the ice. Sudden stop on one of those motors is death to the motor. It destroys, bends the crankshaft and everything else. Who cares? Anyway, they left the airplanes. Well, some rich guy from Kentucky decided, we've got brand new World War II airplanes sitting up there. Vintage aircraft. He's got plenty of money, so he sent some guys up there to dig the air to get the airplanes. At first, they thought they might just brush the snow off the wings and, you know, gas them up, rebuild the motors maybe, and fly them home. They finally found them by using ground-penetrating radar. So much ice had accumulated over the top of the plane. The planes were under 263 feet of ice in 48 years. They were P-38s and a couple of regular other fighters and a bom or bomber, I forget what it was, but uh, they especially wanted to get a P-38 because there's only a few in the world still flying from World War II that people have kept up. They've got a website for this uh, called thelostsquadron.com if you want to look up information on these uh, airplanes that landed in Greenland. They melted holes down. They, they, built, they built this machine up there. They called it a gopher. They took copper tubing and wrapped it around and around and around and around, made a big, huge ring of copper tubing and pumped hot water through it. Kind of a cone shape of copper tubing. And they set this on the ice and they pump hot water through it. And of course, it slowly melts its way down. As it melts down, they pump the water off and you end up with a nice, clean, dry hole. You get down about 60 feet or something and they run into a layer of, uh, basically, it's, it's all water. It's still in ice, but it's, it's water's coming in pretty quickly. And so um, they have to keep the pumps running continuously, pumping water out. And they've got some pretty heavy-duty pumps, too, because they're pumping up 263 feet. It takes a real heavy-duty pump. Anyway, they melted these holes down, took the airplanes apart, took one of them apart, and brought the pieces up through the hole. Imagine going down in a four-foot hole, 263 feet, 26-story building. That'd be scary. Claustrophobia. Uh, city. They were down in the, uh, the planes were in the ice for 48 years, 263 feet. You divide it out, that's five and a half feet a year. 10,000 feet is the deepest hole they ever drilled. Divide that by five and a half feet per year and you get 1,824 years. Now the newspaper article said those plane, the uh, 10,000 feet represented 135,000 years. Where's the flaw in their logic here? They thought those were annual rings, and they weren't. Now, some have said, if you lay a weight on top of a piece of ice, it'll sink right through the ice. If you put, you know, lay a big block of ice on a table, and you put a weight on each side and a string going over the top, it'll, it'll cut the block right in half. How many have heard of that experiment before? Uh, lay a penny on top of a block of ice, it'll, it'll sink down through and be frozen on top. It'll end up in the middle of the block of ice, frozen completely around it. This is true. However, that only works at room temperature. Some have said those airplanes probably sank in the ice. They melted down over the years just because of the weight of the airplane. Well, that's not true because, for one thing, airplanes are always built nose heavy. The front of the plane is heavier than the back. Why would they do that way? What if your engines quit running? You want to glide in head first or tail first? Well, head first, right? So airplanes are always built with a, a, over 50% of the weight in the front. If those planes were sinking down because of gravity, they would be crooked. They're not. They're flat. Secondly, things don't sink through the ice based on their own gravity if everything is uniformly cold. It only, that experiment with a penny through the ice will only work at room temperature. And the planes were not crooked. They were flat. Bob Carden is the guy who dug out the airplane. He was in charge of the project. There's his phone number right there. I said, Bob, when you went down to get the airplanes, did you notice rings above the airplanes? He said, well, yeah. You can see them on the picture here. See the dark and light lines? 
I said, how many, how many lines were there, Bob? He said, oh, we never counted them, but there were many hundreds of them. Now, how do you get many hundreds of annual rings in 48 years? You don't, do you? Those aren't annual rings. That's not summer, winter, summer, winter. It's warm, cold, warm, cold, warm, cold. You can get 20 of those in one week in Minnesota, can't you? <laughs> sure you can. Those are not annual rings. Now, last uh, February, or February of 98, Scientific American, a major science magazine, an author published an article about the rings in Greenland, and he still called them annual rings. This is eight years after they proved they weren't. Now we have a problem here. Either the author is ignorant of the truth, or he's lying. He's certainly not right. So hopefully he's just ignorant, because ignorance can be fixed. Okay? Stupid is forever, but ignorance can be fixed. If he's just ignorant, we can deal with that. If he's stupid, I'm sorry, we can't help you. Those are not annual rings. This picture a guy sent me just a few weeks ago. He said, Mr. Hoven, I saw your tape. He said, I live in Alaska. He said, we had a snowstorm one night. In eight hours, the snow piled up all over my car. He said, as I was cutting the snow in blocks to take it off my car, I noticed there's lines in it. He said, I got 15 layers of snow on my car in eight hours. Those aren't annual rings. The Inuit Indians, he said, have 42 or 43 different words for snow. There's soft snow, hard snow, crystalline snow, granular snow, slippery snow, different words. And so in one snowstorm, you can get all sorts of layers in a hurry. So don't let anybody tell you that the Greenland proves the layers, proves the Earth is millions of years old. But in, invariably, when, I, when you do a debate or when you get into an email discussion with somebody, they will say, the varves in the ice, they call it a var, V-A-R-V-E, -E, the varves in the ice prove the earth is more than 6,000 years old. And they probably really believe what they're saying, but they're wrong. Because they assume those are annual rings. 